There is no baby born in this world that did not come by baby. Push! You are born by breakthrough. You had to come through one small canal and your big head was then. Some of you, they needed the help for steps. Come, this head is too big. Come out, come out, come out, come out of her. They have to cast you out. And the way I'm looking at you, when you came out, you came out laughing. <laughs> Life is sweet. The first thing a baby does when it comes out, ah! we can't. You know, the word breakthrough many times can be misunderstood because it is so easily banded around. There are certain words that in Christian circles, they are common. And common things can begin to become familiar. When you become familiar with them, it loses its power and its potency. So then, what is the word breakthrough? The word breakthrough implies having the power. Everybody shout power. power. Or ability to overcome an obstacle or resistance. Which means anytime you hear the word breakthrough, it means there is going to be resistance. Anytime you hear the word breakthrough, it means that there is going to be an obstacle or there is an ob obstacle to overcome. But I want to tell you this. God is the God of your breakthrough. Amen. And every obstacle in your way is going to give way this month. Amen. Breakthrough is when you move from a season of opposition to one of opportunities. That's my definition. You know, last month for us in this church was the month of opportunities. And I said you will find opportunities everywhere. You will come into people and there will be an opportunity. I said you will come into situations, it will be an opportunity. Where other people saw problems, you will see opportunity. Tell somebody next to you, say your breakthrough is here. You see, but let's be honest. You know, there will be opportunity, opportunity, opportunity. There are some people, their whole life is full of opposition. Which means, they, you know, everybody else is applying for a job. They are getting it. They, they, but they, they apply, they don't get. The day it is their turn, something comes up. That's the day, that's the day they say, well, we closed. You know what I'm talking about. They've been in this country for nine years, going on ten. And when they're about to get their permanent residency, that's the day the prime minister decides that that law never doesn't hold again. And you have to be here for 20 years. You say, God forbid. <laughs> Somebody really needs that. Say it. <laughs> but that, that, that is, that's the story for some people. The, there are certain people that it, it's, it's when they are quartered to something that an opposition just comes. I prophesy over you. Every opposition that has been standing in your way, I break it by the Spirit of God. In. Tell three people next, you say, break, 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 break. Tell another five, say, it's time to break, break, break. Breakthrough is about moving past the physical. You know, there are some people that are physical obstacles. Have you ever been at a place of work where this, this person, it's like they sent them from hell? Hey. Have you ever had a neighbor from hell too? Have, you know, have, have you ever had an in-law from hell? Don't say it so loud, you know. So, <laughs> where, where you know this person is an obstacle to your marriage. This woman is an obstacle. Hallelujah. Any obstacle in your way. May the Lord. <laughs> I didn't say how the Lord will deal with them. But they are physical obstacles. But they are also mental obstacles. What are mental obstacles? Mental obstacles are obstacles that are not real, but they appear so. This is when you think your mother-in-law is the problem, but she's not. It's in your mind. Mm. Ah. This is when you think there are no jobs outside. Meanwhile, there are jobs. This is when you are, you, you, you don't, you are afraid to apply to those jobs in Est and Young. And that's in course, sort of. But rather you say, hey, just go and do mini cabin. Or London Underground. It's time to come out from the ground. <laughs> Why? Because you say they don't take people of your color. It's all in your mind. It's a mental break. It's a, you, it's a mental barrier. I see you breaking through every negative mentality. 
Yeah, I mean, you know, mental obstacles are the, the blessing is there, but you can't touch it because there's a glass, an invisible barrier. If Oprah Winfrey can be the biggest and the best, and she's black like you or white like you or whatever she, whatever. Uh, if Obama could be president, everybody say I'm breaking through. Spiritual break. There is another obstacle that is spiritual, which means this: it is not physical. It is also not mental because it is real. But the difference is that with physical, you can touch it. With, me, with mental, it is not real, but appears real. But with spiritual, it is real, but you cannot see it. Do you get that? This is the way Derek Prince puts it. When, when he talks about Ephesians 6, in verse 18. He says, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. But we wrestle against principalities and powers. So he puts it in, in today's English. He says, we wrestle against personalities without bodies. What does that mean? It means they are persons. They, they, they have personalities. They are intelligent, but they do not have bodies. Which means they can see you, but you cannot see them. They can hold you, but you cannot hold them. Problem. And that is why we are here today because irregardless of what is holding you back, your breakthrough is such that you will move past the physical, the mental, and the spiritual that are holding you back from reaching your goals. Some believe that once you become a believer, you will not have any challenges or face any obstacles. I don't know if you are living in the same world with me. The fact that you are a believer is when the problems will start. All hell will break loose. I say, all hell. <laughs> Can you understand what I am saying? The Bible says, when the Philistines heard that they had anointed David, they deployed themselves. Anytime the enemy knows that your promotion is coming, problem will break loose. It's part of the deal. Jesus put it this way. He says, in this world, you will have, you will suffer. When Jesus was about to start his ministry, the Bible says he was led of the spirit to the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Which means the devil was deployed. Before a great anointing will be a great disappointment. New levels, what? New devil. I have never seen a place where you will see two houses full of one inside the house full of diamonds, another house full of charcoal or wood. There's one house in Nigeria they found. How much was it? Five million? Forty-five million dollars. The only reason that house was not attacked is that thieves didn't know it was there. If thieves knew every day somebody would be trying to break in, that's why your life every day, one problem after the other, because you are valuable. The other house that they had 15 naira on the floor. <laughs> How many people attack that house? Talk to the people next to you. Say, that's why you are facing what you are facing. Your marriage is under constant attack because your children are more important than 43 million US. Tell somebody next to you, say, I'm breaking through. The journey into your destiny is usually reading with obstacles that we are to overcome. That is why believers are called overcomers. They are not called enjoy enjoyers. They are not called, you know, pleasurers. To overcome means that there, will so there is something you will overcome. Life is a life of breakthrough. Your introduction to this life, when you were born as a baby, you didn't just appear and come as, they, as you just appeared, you know, you came on a golden cushion <laughs> with angels playing some harp. And some <laughs> <laughs> it is well. No, no, no. And then as you came out, they just served you caviar. So how long we're here now? <laughs> Your majesty, enjoy life. This is how you came. Yeah! Your mother, was, your mother was shouting, yeah! Sorry, I mean, ouch! My mother shouted, ouch, not you. Yeah. 
you know, because, you know, I was born in Brompton Hospital. <laughs> Did I say Brompton? <laughs> in my dreams. I was born in Ireland Maternity, Lagos, Isaleco. <laughs> I'm gonna go here yeah. for now. Yeah. That's name is Fola. It's inside pain that I was born. The rest of you, you be all born with your mother laughing. <laughs> this is easy. <laughs> is that how you are born? <laughs> Look, there is no baby born in this world that did not come by pain. Push. You are born by breakthrough. You had to come through one small canal and your big head was... En- Some of you, they needed the help forceps. Come, this head is too big. Come out, come out, come out. Come out of her. They had to cast you out. And the way I'm looking at you, when you came out, you came out laughing. <laughs> Life is sweet. The first thing a baby does when it comes out, ah, wickedness. <laughs> Hallelujah. But in, in the, it just shows you that this life is going to be full of stuff like that. That if you are going to leave the confines of your mother's womb to come into the likeness of life, you have to push. If you are going to move from this small place of frustration, to the place of blessedness and fulfillment, you will have to what? Push. Talk to the people next to you, say breakthrough. <laughs> Listen to this. The great things in life don't, don't come on a platter of gold. They come in the place of prayer. We are called to break every barrier into living an extraordinary and a blessed life. Many Christians say, you know, say, oh, I'm blessed. I'm not this. I'm blessed. I'm not this. But when you look at their life, their life doesn't look like they are blessed. They look more stressed than blessed. And that was why in the book of First Chronicles, there was a man called Jabez. Came from a blessed family, the tribe of Judah. Judah means praise. That family should have been experiencing praise. But when, the, when his mother gave birth to him, she gave birth to him in pain. She called his name sorrow. And that typified his life. Have you ever felt like you, you had a blessed destiny, but you are living a sorrowful life? And then he came to a point in his life where he got tired of being tired. He said, I need a breakthrough. Yep. Lift up your hand, say, I need a breakthrough. I, need a breakthrough. I tell your neighbor, I said, I need a breakthrough. I need a breakthrough. And the Bible says, and Jabez prayed. And then the Lord heard his prayer. Enlarge my coast. Listen to this. Some things will not come to some people until they pray. You think you just you sit down there and say, oh, you know, you have to be cool, calm, and collected. Those who are cool, calm, and collected don't collect anything in life. <laughs> breakthrough. Everybody shout breakthrough. You see, you have to learn from, the Bible says that the things that were written in the scriptures were written for our admonition. Which means the Old Testament was written as a type or a prophecy or a shadow of what your life would be like. And the children of Israel were in Egypt for 400 years. These children were the children of Abraham. The children of promise, they carried a blessing in their genes. They were going to be the greatest nation on earth. The Israel that we know today, but they they were in a frustrated place. And in order to enjoy the blessing to go to the promised land, they had to break out of Egypt. And this means that there will come in a time in your life that if you're going to enjoy God's blessings, you have to break out of something. Some of you need to break out of some family problems. You've been carrying this thing. You can see it in your father, saw it in your grandfather, and, and now you're a Christian. And you're saying, oh, but I, I'm born again and I got to Liberty Church. Yes, that's why you're at the Liberty Church, so that you can be liberated. It's not the name of the church that will help you. It is the anointing in the church and what you do with it. You say you want to go to sleep now. The pastor is praying for you. The pastor is praying for himself too. So you had better pray. Nobody can pray for you like you will pray for yourself. If I say I'm praying for you, I am praying, but not like I will pray for my own self. 
Israel had to break out of Egypt. There are some problems that are called stubborn problems. It took 10 plagues before Pharaoh could listen. Some of you, it may take 10 years to break out of what you are dealing with. But you will break through. Amen. But the, the spirit of acceleration is going to come upon you. Amen. That what you would have, would have taken you 10 years, you will break through in one year. Amen. Ah, that amen was too big. Shout it three times. And you know what? Sometimes you have to break out. Some people will have to break out of, of their family to get married. And to get out of the family problems. In, the, in this family, they don't marry. You break out of it. In this family, they don't have children. You break out of it. In this family, they die before they break out of it. Then you now marry to get into this new family. Now get into this marriage. The person you are married to has problems too. You have to break that one again. Christianity is a life of warfare. There's no demilitarized zone. Hello? There's no such thing as a casual Christian. A casual Christian is launched for the devil. Tell somebody next to you, say, move out of casualty. <laughs> if you are casual, you will end up in casualty. God usually uses pain to move us forward. I like the way C.S. Lewis put it. He said it. He put it this way. God whispers in our pleasure, but he shouts in our pain. Which means, have you noticed that you'd rarely hear God when you are enjoying yourself? If you've ever formed business class before, it's difficult, it's difficult to hear God in business class. <laughs> if by chance you remember, you know, you just be enjoying, there are just too many things. Would you like some pineapple? By the time you finish pineapple, uh, will you like some sausage and sticks? Would you like this? Where, what time were you here for, for hearing that? In economy. There's economy and there's economic. <laughs> uh, have you been on some, yeah, some, there's one flight that we took. Oh, Jesus. The chair was like bench. <laughs> so hard. <laughs> oh. You can't sleep on that kind of chair. You have to just be praying. Shaka, shaka. <laughs> This condition will not be permanent. <laughs> but listen to this. If you were not born in this country, you are, you, are, you are better than most people. I have noticed, I found out in this life, that prosperity is a time where we can hardly hear God. They say, come for prayer meeting. They say, oh, I'm too busy. Oh, I have a meeting at, uh, in, Sweet, in, in Geneva. Uh, so, so, and so. Then they now make you redundant. So, wait, what time did they say the night until he said? That's why it's seven, you'll be there at six o'clock. You're already praying now, sir. Shakata, Brosoto. See, Lord, hear me. See my cry. <laughs> we hardly change when we see the light. We will usually change when we feel the heat. <laughs> When there's fire, the light of the fire should help you see clearer. But most people, they don't hear any word. Though. Fire is burning. The, the light is showing go this way. They don't hear until the fire comes there and burns, burns their bum. Then that's when they, they wake up. May you not feel the heat before you move. May you not what? Feel the heat before you move. A lot of us are seeing the light as you are hearing this message and you are taking the notes. But I'm telling you, most people, the notes will remain in the notes until God sends the heat. Tell somebody next to you, you say, I will, learn by I will learn by instruction and not by punishment. Not by punishment. The Bible says, so the Egyptians pursued them. Everybody say, pursue. pursue. <laughs> there is pursue. You see, there's some suffering that is pursue. Uh, you missed your train, that's pursue. <laughs> you missed your bus, pursue. Oh, your, your gyro didn't come in early. That's pursue. Ah. <laughs> they sent you a letter. You have 23 days to leave this country. <laughs> That's what? Pursue. <laughs> 
means train. Oh. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? They are telling you that you, ha you have only six months to live. That's what? Poor shoe. <laughs> the enemy pursued them. You see, when, when Israel left Egypt, they left coolly. The blood. All they needed to do is, I plead, I plead the blood. And the devil left them alone. And they even got favor. They, they, the Bible says, spoil the Egyptians. And as, so they left cool, and they were just strolling coolly towards their destiny. And then they now met an obstacle. When they met the obstacle, they, they were even pondering, there's an obstacle in our way. What do we do about it? What do you think? I think we should have a consensus. <laughs> or, or, or start a focus group. Then somebody said, eh? Sifero, <laughs> come in with uh, eh, eh, eh. They, they, they go to pursue us, so <laughs> they will kill us. They move. <laughs> I watched one movie over the weekend. It's called The Wedding Planner. It's, an, it's a Nolly movie. Uh, have you watched the Nolly? Eh? You should. You, you, the wedding party. <laughs> Interesting. I hear it's the highest ending uh, Nollywood movie. The, the wedding planner, the event was, say, oh, please serve all the guests in a row. Make sure all things are in line. Please serve the, the, the. When they fin now finished. <laughs> there was one woman. <laughs> one mama. It, <laughs> it was her of other eyes that was moving. Then the food now finished. And then this lady now saw that her business was in disarray. So he said, oh, please, man, don't go, don't go, me down. Don't do what I say. He said, hey, 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 hey. if you don't hear what, he said, mama, enjoy. More for long, baby. Enjoy. Enjoy. More, my walkie to you see. So what happened to all the, uh, all the, because the problem went from pursuit to pause. <laughs> Now, wait, wait, wait. All that I said was just tongues for, I'm begging you in the name of the Lord. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I persuade you on behalf. I plead and intercede. Yeah, that's what all that means. Where was I? How did I get into all this now? <laughs> yeah, you see, the Egyptians. Have you ever been in the problem before where you know the Egyptians were after you? Oh, God. Ah, hmm. Oh, you won't sleep. <laughs> the, the Bible says, so they started to cry out to the Lord. And the Lord said, why are you crying out to me? He said, he said to Moses, he says, take the rod in your hand and tell the Israelites, go forward. God told me to come to tell you that problem that's been making you cry, that you have a rod of prayer in your hand. That in this month of May, 2017, as you lift up the rod of prayer in the place of breakthrough, that the enemies you see now, you will see no longer. The Red Sea you see in front of you, as you stretch out your hand, that that Red Sea will open in the mighty name of Jesus. But do you know that that rod was in, in Moses' hand all this while? Some of you will not discover the weapon of prayer. Until you find problem. Until problem finds you. Oh God. <laughs> there are problems and there are problems. That's why David said in the Psalms, in Psalm 77 verse 2, in the day of my trouble I sought the Lord. Which means when there was no trouble, what does that mean? I didn't seek God. My hand was stretched out in the night without ceasing. Which means when there was no trouble, your hand was folded in sleep. My soul refused to be comforted. Sometimes you need to be discomforted. You see, some of us, our, 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 our calling is to, is to comfort the discomforted. But all, another side of the calling is to make uncomfortable the comfortable. Discomfort. Why? Because if you're going to enter into destiny, you need something to push you. Tell someone next, next to you, say, it's time to move on. It's time to move up. There's a man called, a woman called Maria, Maria Woodward Ether. This woman, the reason why she has a double barrel name is not like my own name, 
the first part, Woodward, was that she was married to a man called John something Woodworth. She had six children by this man. And this man, the first thing that happened was that she, she, she lost five of these children. So she was left with one. That's tragedy, isn't it? Then this man now had an affair and she divorced him. Then she married Mr. Ita. Mr. Ita now, after they got married, died. How many of you know that's tragedy? And she began to see, she saw that death was pursuing her. I said, look, I have only one child left. I have even my own life. She now began to search the scriptures, even though she was Christian. Is there any promise about life or healing? And as she searched and prayed, she got, she, she, she found life in the scriptures. Listen to this. Let me tell you, there are many scriptures that your rod is in your hand, but you are not using it. You say, hey, but I, I have been praying since. You know, a lot of people, people you, you, you are sorry to say, in my country, they call them Allah Dura. These are people that pray, but no word. Who is the winning woman? The winning woman is contemporary, dynamic, strong, fun, adaptable, industrious, hopeful, beautiful, spiritual. No matter what life throws at you, you have what it takes to be a woman who wins. Life throws up real issues, dilemmas and problems. But at the Winning Woman Conference, you'll learn the keys to ride the seasons and triumph. We'll talk about real issues, triumphing over depression and sexual temptations, dealing with delay, building great relationships, innovating inspired work that utilizes your skills and passions and the spiritual keys to a win as a woman you'll hear real life stories through chat shows and panels get inspired by inspirational talks and be equipped through breakout workshops are you ready to become a winning woman if so join your host bimbo fola alade and guest speakers on Saturday, 15th of July, 2017 at the De Beers Venue Conference Center in Canary Wharf. Basic conference spaces are free or you can purchase deluxe tickets for a two course lunch and other conference benefits. To register, visit www.eventbrite.co.uk and search for the Liberty Church. Get ready for a day of fun, fellowship, wisdom and winning.